Good morning, good morning. Welcome once again to Searching the Scriptures. We're on an intentional course that is to stay uh, in light of the Word, which is a, the Word of God, which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And today we're going to talk a little bit about hope. And we're going to focus in on the word hope, the hope which purifieth and the hope that sets an uh, anchor to us in the time of trouble, in the time of storm. The scripture declares hope purifies us. And we're going to see as we've been talking the other day about God searching hearts and God discerning the thoughts and intents we're coming out of Hebrews, the words discerning the thoughts and intent and how we are to um the first song came to me this morning was um, hold on, holding to his hands, um, uh, God's unchanging hands. And Pastor Nelly came up she, and, and she didn't know the Lord had given that to me, but God is directing us. And her statement was, I'm still holding on. I'm still holding on to my faith. And so this really, both of these songs are fitting for what the Lord, I believe, is doing. When he says he's searching the hearts and judgment beginning at his house that he's searching us and all talk about the hypocrites in Zion. So it talks about, thank you, Jesus, sending the light of Christ in the very depths of our being, which all the things that we're going to see from the scriptures that come to shake up. And he says in the scripture, those things that are shaken, uh, those things that he has planted will remain and all that he has not established shall be removed. So God is not just shaking with volcanoes and tornadoes and, and, and twisters, but he's shaking the confidence and the, and the, the, uh, the security or the, 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 uh, the idea, you know, I'm okay. As long as I got my money, I'm okay. As I got my house, I'm okay. I got this certain things that we put as pillars in our lives to make us feel that we have security. And so, uh, we are going to pray and thank God because this is coming and touching home. It's touching me. It's touching everybody uh, throughout the world. It's not just touching. Um, as some people say, well, um, you know, the wicked is being t t touched or I'm good because nothing is touching me, you know. And we are going to find that God said he knows those who really are trusting him and they have safety, uh, they have shelter under the safety of his arms. They are protected by him. Even though, as Habakkuk was said, all, even though all the things may not be in the bond, and all, even though the trouble may come, Habakkuk said that he is continuing to trust God. So we can see Habakkuk in this situation when we're talking about hope. And that hope is, 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 has to be anchored in God. It has to be anchored in our faith in God and trusting that God will bring us through. So we're going to go through some scriptures and we're going to pray. First, we're going to pray and then we're going through the scriptures. Okay. And we're going to sing a couple of songs. All right. Father, we thank and praise you. First of all, you have begun this work in us. It is you that brought us out of darkness, opened our eyes, gave us an ear to hear and a heart to receive your word. We thank you for the work and calling upon our lives. We humble ourselves before you. Thank you for your grace and mercy, Lord God. Hallelujah, you made the enemy behave in many of our lives when we should have been cut off. We would have been spending years and years and years in hell, but you you saw fit to reach down and to snatch us out, oh God. How about go she out of the fires of hell? My soul is rejoicing, God, hallelujah, in your mercy and grace and in the lives of all those that you have your eyes are beholding and Lord you are moving oh God among the earth and in your spirit Lord God reproving rebuking hallelujah you are re, uh, reproving the world of sin and of righteousness and judgment we thank you for your word that will go forth today helping us to, to hold fast to God's unchanging hand and as Pastor Nelly said holding on to our faith and won't let go Lord and we thank him praise you for this anchor in our souls we thank you for the hope that we have which is in Christ the solid rock on which we stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. We thank and praise you for your grace and mercy in every single one of our lives. We ask you to have your way as we go into the word. May it fall on good ground and take root in our lives. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to sing first. Um, Trouble in my way. That's the song that as I was studying. It says, trouble in my way, trouble in my way. I have to cry sometime, I have to cry sometime. Trouble in my way, trouble in my way. I have to cry sometime, I have to cry sometime. Lay awake at night, lay awake. that's all right. I know Jesus, Jesus will fix it. After a while, stepped in the furnace. 
long time ago. Hallelujah. With Shadrach and Meshach, Abednego. Now they wasn't worried. This I know. Jesus will fix it. I know Jesus. Jesus, he will fix it. After a while, and it says, trouble in my way. I have to cry sometime, trouble in my way. I have to cry sometime, I lay awake at night. That's all right, but I know Jesus, Jesus, he will fix it. I know Jesus, Jesus, he will fix it. After a while, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Um, and we're going to sing the one, but a song I'm still holding on and Pastor Nelly, um, uh, I'm still holding on. And mine was, um, a hold to his hand, God and change the hand. We'll sing it at the end, but this one here, we're going to try to upload it. Um, it was put out by Abastina Walker for perform trouble in my way. Uh, Jesus will fix it. And this, uh, song is on the internet and we're going to upload it too. So you can get it. And it, what I, I remember this song because when I first got saved in my twenties, um, we was talking about um, trouble in our ways, and we don't we're gonna have to cry some. So crying sometime. We're in a season now of crying. Okay, we're going through some trying, crying, and we're gonna look at the scriptures in Ezekiel, Ezekiel the ninth chapter, and Ezekiel the ninth chapter is because see when God starts dealing with us on the earth, and and you know you talk about whom He loves, He chasing, and if He ain't chasing in you, did He say clearly He only chasing those that are His? Okay. So that means, what is he chasing us for? So that we can bring forth more fruit and that we can bring, bring forth the precious fruit of righteousness. That's why these trials come. To, we might bring forth the precious fruit of righteousness. And which I was listening to, uh, look into the scripture. And we're going to go to um, James. And it talks about in the book of James. And I need to put that down too. Um, because they're talking about James, the eight, uh, fourth chapter, talking about, um, talking about our hearts being purified our hearts being purified and that's going to come up out of James. Okay. I want to make sure I get that. And also in John, uh, the first chapter. So we're going to read James and John talking about pure God purifying us. You know, he trials come, these fiery trials come upon the, you to try you. Don't think it's strange. Okay. Cause God is purifying you. But we talk about when it says trouble in my way, I got to cry sometime. We're going to Ezekiel and God says in the first verse of the ninth chapter of Ezekiel, he cried also in my ears with a loud voice saying, Come, cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in the in his hand. So God is talking about bringing in um, uh, uh, judgment, okay? Uh, and his their thoughts can be every man in his chamber. The first, um, uh, in Ezekiel, the eighth chapter, it begins to talk about God looking at the imaginations of people's heart. What's in their minds. In fact, we're going to read verse um, 12. Then said he unto me, son of man. This is the 8th chapter of Ezekiel and the 12th verse. Then said he unto me, son of man, thou hast seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark. Every man in the chamber of his imagery is so is in his mind. Okay, for they say the Lord seeth us not. The Lord has forsaken the earth. This is what people are saying now. They can do anything they want to do, anything they imagine, their minds and stuff. And it's just, just thoughts just coming, all kinds of wicked thoughts, what they're going to do. And it said God has forsaken the earth. But then God is, and, and he, he goes down and he, God begins to answer and to tell uh, Ezekiel, what to do. He gives Ezekiel a vision of what he's about to do, which God says he would not do anything except he revealed it to his prophets first. So he's letting us know now that he's getting ready to deal with the imagery and the thoughts of man. Okay. In the very depth. So in the chapter nine, that was eight verses 12. Now we drop them down to Ezekiel nine verse one. He cried also in my ears, with a loud voice saying, cause them that have charge over the cities to draw near even every man with, the, with his destroying weapons in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the high gate and, the, and lies toward the north and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen with a writer's ink 
horn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. Okay. And, and the glory of the God was, uh, was gone up from the cherubim, whereupon he was as the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's ink horn in his hand. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the forehead of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in, this, in the midst thereof. And so God is mocking them who goes, who, whose mind is troubled by what's going on in the earth. That's why we say sometimes people say, well, it ain't happening to me. So I don't care what's happening over there. You know, when we go back to the scripture, say you are your brother's keeper. You are, it's in other words, all of mankind is considered to be a brotherhood. All of us, you know, red, black, white. You know, well, all of us considered, he said maybe all of us one blood. We got a different coat on. <laughs> we got a different coat of skin on, but as far as God concerned, we are all a brotherhood. I know a lot of people right there is offended because, <laughs> but that's what God is going after. He's going after that attitude. Okay. Again, going after that thought because he said he's going to bring every thought to into captivity to the knowledge and obedience of Christ. When he said we all are brotherhood, he means just that. Okay. And so he, you see, he says he's going to mock those who are weeping, mark those who are troubled by the desolations and, and that be uh, done in the midst. And the others, he said, in my hearing, go ye after him through the city and, and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have any pity. Slay utterly the old, the young, both maids and little children and women. But come not near any man upon whom the mark of and the beginning of my, beginning at my sanctuary. So beginning at God's sanctuary, he says, I'm mocking. Now you look at this verse here in, in uh, uh, Ezekiel 9 and going all the way down. It says, slay utterly the old, the young, both maids, little children, women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark. With the mark is the mark of God upon them. Okay. And began at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. And said unto them, Defile the house and fill the courts with the slain. Go ye forth. And they went forth and slew the city. Okay, you can read all that. And it came to pass while they were slaying uh, them. And I was left. So Ezekiel said, I was left. So God was moving among his own people, slaying. Now, some people say, well, why were they slaying the children? You know, because whether you know it or not, okay, if you're dealing with spiritual warfare, some of these children in the, in the spiritual realm, some children coming in the world and the demons are saying, we already in there. We already there. So for them to transition to God it's, it's, it's really taking their vessels out of the hand of the adversary. They, so God already know. He said, God already know who's his. And some of times he said, even the children, because sometimes the children in certain stages have six and seven and eight years old. The enemy has already entered into these vessels. Okay. You can go all the way back to the Old Testament. We're in the Old Testament now, Ezekiel. That's why he said, uh, slay the maids, the little children and the women. But not come near the man upon whom is the mark and beginning at my sanctuary. So this is what God is doing. And we're going to jump quickly to, that was Ezekiel, the ninth chapter. And then we're going to Jeremiah. We're going to Jeremiah, the sixth chapter. Okay. We're going to look at Jeremiah. And I have a lamentation too, but I want to go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah, the sixth chapter. We, we're looking at God. We're talking about... um. Trouble in my way, I got to cross some time. I lay awake at night, that's all right. I know Jesus, Jesus is going to fix it. And Jesus is working right now, okay? He is working to subdue and to bring everything under his, him, everything. He said he will work until he had brought and subdued everything. And one thing he's doing is even talking about the imagery and the thoughts, okay? Now, we know that we in this fleshly are not going to heaven because flesh and blood doesn't go to heaven. So God is trans. I thought about him saying it's appointed unto man once to die. Every single man. 
Every single one who come to work is appointed to die. So even the children, gonna, everybody going to die. Now, one day it says after the death, then the judgment. Okay, because God is going to judge the spirit of what, what was in that vessel, what was in that uh, vessel of clay. Okay, so Jeremiah, the fifth chapter. And it says, run, verse, verse, run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem and see and know and seek in the broad places. Seek in the broad places, thereof, if you can find a man, if there be any that execute judgment, that seeketh the truth, and I will pardon it. So we talk, we just looked at Ezekiel. So now he's talking about here. Okay, run through the city and see if you see anyone who is seeking the truth. Okay, and I will pardon it. Which we know that happened with, with uh, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah when Abraham interceded. Lord, if there's 50 righteous, if there's 40 righteous, you know, if there's 10 righteous, Lord, spare the city. Of course, it was not 10 people in there that was righteous. God took a lot and his wife and his daughters out. Okay, so now God is saying again. He says, uh, uh, if there be any that execute judgment, that seeketh the truth, and I will pardon. And though they say the Lord liveth, surely they swear falsely. So this is talking among people who confessing that they know God too. O God, are not thine eyes upon the truth? Thou hast stricken them, but they have not grieved. And has uh, consumed them, but they have not refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to turn. So God is doing things to turn people, turn us from our ways. That's what Jeremiah said, mend your ways and turn. He said, you have done all this here to turn. Therefore, I said, surely these are poor and they are foolish, for they mm -hmm. know not the way of the Lord, nor the judgment of their God. I will get me up into the great men and I will speak to them, for they have known the ways of the Lord and the judgment of their God. But these have altogether broken the yoke and burst the bonds. So they done broke out from underneath God. And the scriptures say in the New Testament, they turn over to a reprobate mind because they don't even want to retain God in their conscience. I don't even want to think about God. I don't even want to think about God. I just want to do what I want to do. Okay. So now we're going to read all the fifth chapter. We're going to go over to the sixth, to the sixth chapter. Okay. Uh, do I want to go to the sixth chapter? I got the fourth chapter here. Let's see here. Okay. Um, well, read the fourth chapter too, and then go all the way down to the sixth chapter, the 31st verse. Okay. All this here is talking about God turning people away. Um, and it says, just as the Lord of hosts, they shall thoroughly glean the, the remnant of, of Israel as a virgin, as a vine. Turn back thy hand as a grape gatherer unto the uh, baskets. To whom shall I seek and will give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear ear is uncircumcised and they cannot hearken. Behold, the words of the Lord are to them is a reproach. They have no delight in the word of God. This is the, um, Jeremiah 6 verse 10. Okay. They, and you just read from the fourth chapter all the way to the fifth because you're looking at the condition. Now people say, well, this is history. No, remember the word of God is, doesn't have a time frame on it. It's true. In whatever generation is read, it's still true and it still pertain to the same uh, that everybody who hears it. Okay, so we are hearing it now. And it says, to whom shall I speak and give warning? So we're trying to give the God wants to turn warning to turn, turn from our ways. And it says, uh, um, behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in the word of God. They don't want to hear it. Turn the word of God off. I don't want to hear, turn the TV off, turn the Bible off. I don't want to hear another. So, but God has said already he's preparing for them to go to, to he's a pair preparing his horsemen and his vessels to come. The four horsemen is coming from heaven to deal with man who's saying, I don't even want to hear the word of God. I don't want to hear it. Okay. Read Jeremiah fourth chapter all the way to the sixth chapter. Okay. Now we're going to go to, um, Versus, uh, we're going to the book of Isaiah. Now, the reason I think this is important is because trouble in my way, I got to cry sometime. Trouble in my God has said He's gonna send trouble on the earth, y'all. And those who wish we're gonna see Isaiah 40, 
God is going to purify his, his house. He's going to purify his house. He's going to purify and tread, and he's going to be moving. And Jesus is not in the earth just here to just say, I've died, and then I'm just going to, oh, come on, y'all. Come on, come on, y'all. Come on. No, no. Okay. The come on, y'all, is when he's preaching. Okay. And you see the people, the house of God, they're moving away from him. And then even we saw yesterday with the, with the greedy dog shepherds, they bringing them in there, and, but they just fleecing them. And getting more money from them, but they're not thinking about their soul. So that's all this is going on. I said, you know what? Only person can solve this here. It's got to be God. It's got to be this. He said, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. It's got to be spirit of God who discern thoughts and intent. It's only got to be God. Only God can filter through all this, y'all. He only one. So that's why I'm saying, Lord, have mercy on me. Okay. Um, Isaiah 40. Which is, which is the verse that said, Comfort ye my people, saith the Lord, speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished and that her iniquity is pardoned. So God is speaking pleasant words to the body of, to his body, which is Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the tabernacle of God and it's not just a brick and mortar, y'all. It's not brick and mortar. It is a spiritual house. But then he says in the verse um, 28 of the 40th chapter, obviously, has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainted not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. We talk about the uh, Judas talking about in Nehemiah that the strength of the those who bear burden is decayed. But God said he gives strength. He says he giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases, which goes along what we read in Ezekiel and read in uh, Jeremiah. Put a mark on those who are really seeking after me. Those who are really, I want you to make sure that it's clear in the spiritual realm. These are mine and they are seeking me and they are uh, 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 crying about or they are troubled about the destruction that's gone on the earth. Put a mark on them, okay? Even, it says, even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fail. But they that wait upon the Lord... Those who waiting on God shall renew their strength and shall mount up with wings as an eagle. Okay. And what does the eagle's wings do when he mounts up? He getting ready to get above the storm. He getting ready to butter above the, he getting ready to get, the eagle spreads her wings because with her wings, he, the, when the storm come, the, her, she's lifted up high above the storm. That's what the eagle do. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with Wings as eagles. They're talking to me as a rapture. Wings as eagles. They're getting ready to soar and go up. Okay. With wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Okay. Those that wait upon the Lord. Okay. That's what they talk about. So it says here, God is getting ready to put those who are waiting for him, who are trusting him, who are putting their uh, trust in him. And this is what the Lord said. We're going to back up into Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah was not back up because we're going to go to Jeremiah 29, which everybody quotes this scripture all the time. When God says, um, when it says over here, those who are waiting for him, those who are trusting him, those who put their confidence in him, those who are still holding on to their faith, those who will not let go of his unchanging hands, who holding him as an anchor to their soul. God says this here. Okay. And this is what you know, this scripture, Jeremiah 29. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me when you search me with all your heart. So God is after the hearts, okay? That's 29 and 11. So God is going into the hearts of people. And we was thanking God this morning in the midst of all that's going on. God is preserving his people and God is keeping him. Even though he's shaking foundations and he's shaking the earth, he's shaking you, Jesus, and he's shaking stuff. We're thanking God for no lives being lost. Thank you, Jesus. Because remember, nobody is going to die except God already know where they're going to go. He, and we just said, Lord, at the end of time, because of circumstances, please keep them, Lord. Bring them back so they have in their right mind and, and, and they be able to make a decision for you because God is definitely a God of a second chance, third chance, fourth chance, fourth chance. Fourth. God, if he told us to forgive, He's He. you can say, Lord, they're not ready. Give them another time. Give them another time. And see, God, 
that ultimately knows, which we could see when David was praying and God took that baby. What's nothing wrong with the baby? God said, you know what? This baby is your joy and I'm taking this baby. So God and ultimately has the one that makes decisions. Okay. So now we're going to first John. First John. Thank you, Jesus. And beginning at the third chapter. And the third chapter and beginning at the third verse. Okay. Begin at the second verse of the of John, the second verse. It said, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what, what, it doesn't appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And this what stood out to me because clearly God is doing a new thing, which he then sold us. And it's appointed to everybody to die. After that, the judgment. So at the, at the time when you die and you, it's like the seed in the ground is planted, which the earth is deemed under the parable of the seed of being sown is the world is, con, is determined to be the ground. So we are all in the world. We are all really just seeds. Okay. We are all seed. And now whether or not we are going, what we're going to be when we, come forth from the state of being dead, whether or not you are a seed of the serpent or a seed of God. Okay. That's the, read this parable. Okay. And it says, beloved, now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he Christ shall appear, we shall be like Christ. Those who are now be partakers of Christ. Okay, he's a chief, we told you before, and we are become part of him. Okay, um, shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that has this hope, that's what the song says, um, um, hold, hold to his hands, hallelujah, God's unchanging hand, oh, hold to his hands. God's unchanging hand, build your hope on things eternal. We ought to hold to God's unchanging hands. How the time is filled with swift transition, not of us. I, I gotta get this song, y'all. Okay, <laughs> this is, but I'm gonna sing it as the end so we can make sure we have it. This song, um, um. This other one said so Jesus will fix it. These songs came up because, see, the one about time is filled with swift transition. I want to get it. Because, see, we are in a time when tra swift transition, things are changing. Now, everybody can confess that the time is filled with swift transition, okay? Um, oh, this is it. I'm going I'm to I'm give you the words to it. Because, see, when God talk about going through the city and, and dealing with people, uh, and dealing with hearts, it says, time is filled with swift transition. None on earth unmoved can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Then hold to God's unchanging hands. Hallelujah. Trust in him who will not leave you. What? Whatever the years may bring, when your earthly friends forsake you, still, still more closely to him cling. Hallelujah. Everybody ought to hold to his hand. That's what it's saying. And that's what it comes down to this year. I'm going to give you those songs. And the reason is because every man that has this hope in him, and the hope is that we are anchored in Christ purify it. So this hope that we have is purified. It purifies us even as he is pure. What to hope got the beloved now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear. Thank you Jesus. Let me, let me let my brother y'all call him back. Okay. Hold on y'all. I'm going I'm to close out this my brother. We just going to be chit chatting so I'm going to let him know I will call him back. And um, and uh, continue this tape. I don't want to stop right this minute. Y'all don't mind, please. Um, okay. On the YouTube. 
He's right down the street. We're just going to be, we, we usually just call and talk to each other and encourage each other uh, to continue on our faith. And so we're just going to interject that right here. Okay, y'all. Sorry about that, y'all. To you too. Okay, so I'll call him back. So anyway, I want to, we're not going to, there's not a lot more of this here, but I want to make sure we finish at this point. And it's because, um, Every man, it says, that has this hope in him. And your hope has to be that we are the sons of God if we have accepted Jesus Christ. Then we will become partakers of him. We become a part of Christ and Christ is in us. When we shall appear, we shall be like Christ. You're not going to appear and say, you, Doris, and my brother's here. No, you're going to be like Christ. And it doesn't even appear what. It says what you shall be like, Okay. It doesn't even yet appear. Okay. Okay, he's here to talk to me later. So I'm gonna call him. He's um he's he's right down the street. So this is important. I want y'all to know because see, God is shaking up things and he's checking hearts. He went back to his ego talk about the imagery and talk about what's in the heart and it talks about um go through and see if we are not separating ourselves or troubled by it, we're like in other words, you're comfortable with what's going on in the world, then God says, no, mock those who are disturbed by the destruction. Those who, God wants us to have his mindset. Now, we probably, like one group of people say, God don't even see all this. He does see it. And he wants to know who could see it too. And see, is praying for the Lord's kingdom come. As Jesus said, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So we're not pushing and uh, moving forward to the kingdom of God being done on the earth. Flesh and blood is not going to stay. The works of everything on this earth is going to change. Everything on this earth is going to change. And it doesn't yet appear what we shall be. That's what it says. Uh, he that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Where whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed, the seed of Christ remaineth in him. And the reason he said that because once you're in Christ, you're not at the point we can say we're still in the flesh. And that still has to be, the mortal has to be changed to immortality. But because you're in Christ... He's our high priest. His blood is always covering us. We are always covered. That's why it says, for his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. So even when a person, once you're born again, unless Christ takes you out of his body and takes his spirit from you, then God covers your sin. David said, blessed is the man to whom God does not impute iniquity, which is going with this scripture here. That means God said, no, they, they, they stand before me righteous, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. The blood of Christ has already uh, been paid for their sins. And God is still perfecting us. Like uh, the song that said, please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. When God gets through with me, I shall come forth as pure gold. That's another song too, okay? I'm not on the quiet, y'all. One of the YouTubers said, are you on the quiet? No, I'm not on the quiet. I got my own little quiet going over here with Jesus. Okay, in this, the children of God are manifest in the children of the devil. Whosoever does not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. That goes with racial issues, okay? You don't love your brother, then you ain't born of God either. I don't like the whispering. I don't like that race of people. I don't like this. Didn't we just talk before? He can make us all one brethren. Because he made us all of one blood and put us on different coats. <laughs> Some black coat, white coat, yellow coat, you got a red coat, you got a different coat on. But you, as far as God concerned, are still human beings and you still have the same blood. As far as God concerned, okay? So now we're going to go um, to John, the book of John. That was first John. We're going to the book of John. And um, I, could, I should have cut my phone off, God. Please forgive me, y'all. My brother doesn't mind. He know I'm going to call him back. Okay. John, the fourth chapter. And um, so uh, there's a lot of things going on, but this is trying to encourage y'all that we are to put on Christ, be clothed in Christ, be transformed by Christ, put on Christ daily. It's up to us whether or not we're going to be changed in a moment. And see, we have to put on Christ. For this is what he says in uh, the fourth chapter. 
No, this is James. I'm supposed to be going to James. We're with the fourth chapter. Now. Okay, you see we over here rushing, y'all. I want to make sure James talks about our hearts. Um, actually, James talk about um, um, draw near to God and he will draw near to you and cleanse your hearts, your hands and your hearts. I'm going to read that because that's what James, this is James. He, he clean, cleanse your hands and your heart. So the God word will cleanse us. We're in the stage now whether or not we're going to be washed or whether we're going to be clean or what kind of condition we're going to be, which is Bible clearly tells us not without, what, without a spot, wrinkle, or blemish. We cannot go to God, okay? So James, the fourth chapter, verse 8. Okay, this says, Draw nigh to God. And he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn, which go up with the scriptures and mock those who are weeping and mourning. Because we can't be comfortable with the stuff that's going on in the world, okay? Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy into heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. So that's why God said, go through the town and mock those who are weeping, you know, who, and see, a lot of times people say when you're praying, they, they're going to be, we talk about God putting a burden on people's hearts. The burden of what's happening in the world, human trafficking, babies being a, uh, um, uh, so, I mean, uh, aborted for the purpose of organs and namas. I mean, some of this stuff should be troubling us if we have the mind of God. God who's seeing it, he's definitely troubled. So we need to be troubled too, okay? And that's what God is saying. You cannot be comfortable with, with you seeing people and knowing they're on their way to hell. Well, they can go on. No, no, you don't have the heart of God because God's heart is that all men be saved. In fact, he said this morning to me, I do not afflict them willingly. I got that scripture too. He says, I do not willingly afflict them. That came out of um, Lamentation. I might have to read that because he said he does not willingly afflict the, the, the children of men. He's not willingly saying, I'm just going to afflict them because I got the power to afflict them. He, he says, no. Um, that's verses uh, 26, Lamentations 3, verses 26 to 35. And it says, uh, it, is, it is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke of his youth. He sitteth alone and keepeth silent because he has bore it upon him. God has put this upon him. He putteth his mouth to the dust, so it, uh, if so be, there may be hope. So God brings this affliction for hope. He putteth his mouth in the dust. If so be, there may be hope. He giveth his cheek to him that smiteth him. He is filled full of reproach. For the law will not cast off forever. But though he cause grief, yet he will have compassion according to the multitude of his mercy. For he does not afflict willingly, nor grieve the children of men. So God is causing these things. Read uh, Lamentations 3. Read the whole thing. That was verses 26 down to 33. Um, He's not doing it willingly. There's not, he doesn't take any pleasures. In the death of the uh, of us, he wants us to turn. He wants us to turn to him. Okay, that's what the scripture is telling me. Okay, and we should be touched with what's happening to other people. We should. I mean, if you say you're a Christian, you say you have Christ in you, and He went so far as to die for these people, and you can't even pray for them or even talk to them. Something's wrong with him, and you're not on your way to heaven. And neither am I. If I'm, if I got that attitude, we won't be because unless God put us through this here. Uh, testing and this trial when these tr fiery trials come upon us don't think it's strange because we got the wrong attitude and God said whom I love I chasten this is what the scriptures say okay 8 chapter of Romans and the 24th verse and then we're going to close out okay it says for we are saved by hope but hope that is seen is not hope for what a man seeth, why does he hope for it? But if we hope for that which we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Okay, these infirmities is things that's wrong with you. For we know not what we ought to pray for, we, uh, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. 
For he that searches the heart knoweth what is the mind of the spirit and because he maketh intercessions for the saints according to the will of God. So God is doing this. Everything we're going through is for our good. Look, that's what the scripture is saying. Uh, 24, verse down to 27. Okay. And I have over here the 15 and 13. Okay. So we're going to close out here. I believe. Okay. 15, 13. What does that say? Now the God of hope. We're going to end with that. That's Romans 15, 13. Now the God of hope filled you with all joy and peace and believing. And believing that you, God filled you with believing, that means in faith. We had to talk about faith in Christ. And believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay? That's what it says. And I got Peter down here too, but we're going to stop here. Because we're we'll be talking about God, and we're going to close with that song. Um, I want to sing this song. We're kind of messing it up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Now, we, we don't have all the time that we would love to do this, okay? Uh, we would like to just be all the time sitting here talking to God. And we're going to sing this again. Time is filled with swift transition. None on earth unmoved can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal then. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Trust in him who will not leave you. What, whatever the year may bring, when your earthly friends forsake you. That's not the tune. Still more closely to him sing. No, still more closely to him cling. I'm messing up, y'all. <laughs> Please be patient. Okay, remember we said we're being patient. God is not through it. So we are hoping that this lesson is is in your hearts and um, and that you are see in this time it's personally God is challenging and trusting and, and checking um, each heart whether or not they have the heart of God. Whether or not you can be touched with people, like the Samaritan, the good Samaritan. The priest went by, the other person went by, and here comes the Samaritan, saw the man and took him up and helped the man and put him on his horse and paid. God is looking for the people that got a heart like God. Like, the, 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 he's looking for them kind of people, okay? Just because we got religion and, and, and degrees and look good and smell good and have money, that does not qualify us for heaven. Okay, we got to have the heart and mind of God. And Pastor Nelly says, I'm still holding on, holding on to my faith, and I won't let go. Uh, and there's a song that I started walking. There's, there, all these are songs, y'all. And God apparently is bringing them up in the hearts and minds of his children to bring them back. To understand when he plant that seed in there, those songs, the Lord he gave us trouble in my way, and then hold to God's unchanging hand, build your uh, faith on things, things eternal, and continue to hold on to God. Okay, so we'll see if we're gonna upload this. <laughs> we're all over the place, but we thank you for joining our YouTube channel, and we're going back here and, and deal with the young men and cook, you know, the house stuff. Let's close out. Father, we thank and praise you, first of all, for your abiding presence in us, thy Holy Spirit, the sweet Holy Spirit, the presence of you, Lord. We thank you for the mind of Christ in our heart that the word will fall on good ground and take root in our lives. We understand we have earthly things to deal with, Lord God, but help us to stay rooted and grounded in thee and to hold to your hands. And as Pastor Nelly says, still holding on to our faith, we won't let go, determined to hold on until the very end, Lord. But he that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. We thank and praise you for the salvation in the souls of every single soul that come on this YouTube channel. We're just regular people, Lord God, and we want to share your goodness and share and testify of all your loving kindness toward us. We thank and praise you that many of us are faced with so many things, but we thank and praise you that we have our anchor. Our anchor is, hallelujah, is holding on to you. You are the one that keep our souls when we commit our lives and our cares into your hands, and you're able to secure all those who run to you for reference, for you are a strong tower in the time of need. You are a shelter in the time of storm. You are a rock in the weary land. We give you the praise and the glory and honor as we commit ourselves. We thank you for the healing that's going forth, oh God, in California, and the, the grace and the mercy that you're doing in the north 
forth, Lord God, in the lives of your servants, God. We thank him that you're perfecting that which concerns them, Lord God, that they are becoming more like Christ. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. We remember those in Washington, Julian Stan, Lord God, and all of your people over the earth. You have begun the work in us, and we know that you will not forsake them. You have promised never to leave your people. You will never leave us, God. Even I can testify, and when we stumble and fall, Lord God, you're right there to bear. Even we like the prodigal son that went way off. We thank and praise how you will go and gather that one sheep back and bring them back to the fold. We thank you for all those that you're returning, even those who have gone astray and been been, been uh, off in the wrong path that you will bring them back to the place. Oh God, hallelujah. Take us back when we first receive you, where we first believe, Lord God, that your perfect will be done in us and through us. It's in Jesus' name. We pray for our pastor. You know uh, your son, oh God, and his family. We pray for him, Lord God. You know who I'm talking about. And I pray that you will continue to bless him. We love him. We love all of your people, Lord God. And many of us can confess we're not perfect, but we thank and praise you for your grace and mercy in our lives and that you have begun the work. We we know that you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. For you would that we prosper and be in good health, even as our soul prosper. We lift up everyone in the sound of my voice, the young people, the old people, the people in different religions, wherever they are, they still belong to you because all souls belong to you. And they might go share, Lord, and one day we will all stand before you, Lord God, and we will not be able to hide anything. You will know us clearly, Lord God. We pray for the salvation of the souls of every soul that listen to this YouTube channel. Lord God, we thank you, as Pastor Raymond said this morning, we we are praying for them, Lord God, and we know that you do hear and you do answer prayer. And it's your will that all men be saved. We thank you for the salvation of souls of those that you have predestined and determined to be conforming to the image of Christ. We commit ourselves into your hands and count it done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Be blessed. Please get I'm going to call my brother. <laughs> I'm going to call my brother. He's the baby. Okay. This is like... Uh, there's a whole bunch of us, and he's the baby. There was 10 of us, and he's the last one out of the womb. So, the Lord is good. Please pray for me, and I pray for you. You pray for me, and I pray for you. We're going to sing that song. All of those songs pop in my head. But we pray that you have a song in your heart and you can continue to trust God. And God didn't bring you over here near me for no reason. Okay, he got plans for your life. <laughs> We got plans for you. He has plans for all of us. And I pray that you continue to search the scripture, go into the word, and just don't just take be light. You know, don't be judging people almost so much, okay? Because remember, when we judge, it's gonna come back to us. The same measure that we measure out is gonna be measured back. Okay. Just take that as a little thing. So come be patient with people and pray for people, okay? And and have a song. Okay. All right, be blessed. Let's close our Father, we thank and praise what our ears have heard and our hearts have felt. We thank you that your word has gone out. I pray that they um, have understanding and that they uh, receive it, Lord God. Hallelujah. That their hope should be built upon you, Lord God, the solid rock in which we stand. Not on anything else, oh God. Not in the time of transition. Things are changing all the time. But we thank and praise that we are anchored in Christ. I pray that your perfect will be done in them and through them as we commit ourselves into your hands. And so in Jesus' name, once again, we say amen. So amen, we say once again. Be blessed, all right? Be blessed. God bless.